I use my Mac day in and day out, and as a power user, there's a number of tools that I really rely on. My work is as a composer, but the apps I'm gonna show you today are not music apps at all. They are universal apps that are useful for pretty much every type of user out there, and I install them on every Mac that I have. First apps to take a look at are Pixelmator and Pixelmator Pro. They're actually sister programs. You only need one of them. I'll recommend Pixelmator Pro if your computer can run it. Or you can go to the junior version, Pixelmator. Each program runs between $15 to $40, depending on whether you can catch it on sale. Both of these programs are absolutely amazing image editors. They're basically Photoshop equivalents, but you're getting them at a very discount price. They are super fast, easy to use, and can basically handle anything graphic you ever want to throw at them. I use Pixelmator when I'm coming up with event banners, or when I'm trying to edit out objects, or when I'm designing t-shirts. Basically, every time I need to do something graphic, I turn to Pixelmator, and you just can't beat the value for the price. You are literally getting a Photoshop equivalent for under $40. My next most favorite app is called Dynamo, and it's actually a Safari extension. Dynamo gives you quick hotkeys that can speed up the playback of any video playing in Safari. This includes Netflix, YouTube, Vimeo, and everything else I've ever thrown at it. Anytime I've got a video playing in my browser, all I do is hit my hotkeys and I can instantly speed it up as much as I want. I've actually found that I enjoy watching most content at 1.5 times. The one thing it doesn't really work well for is music playback, so for that, I hit my hotkey and I go back to just simple one-time playback. Next in my list of favorite apps has to be Keyboard Maestro. You can find it at KeyboardMaestro.com. This is a power user's dream app because you can automate almost anything on the entire computer. I find new uses for Keyboard Maestro on an almost daily basis, and here's some examples of how I use it. Here's a quick routine I wrote to painstakingly copy some entries I made in Google Sheets over into Final Cut Pro as markers. I start a repeat action so it repeats everything in this container 29 times. I activate Safari, I click on a cell, I copy that to a temporary clipboard, I pause, I hit right arrow, I copy another cell to a different clipboard, I pause, I hit down arrow, down lower, I switch into Final Cut Pro, and then I set up my markers and I paste the information I found. Then I loop the entire thing 29 times so I don't have to sit there and do it myself. Here's a quick routine I wrote when I wanna make a social media post. It opens a new Safari window with Facebook, and then another tab with Twitter, another with LinkedIn, another with Instagram, and then it switches Instagram into developer mode so I can actually post from the desktop. Some of my routines are really, really simple. Here's a very simple one that does nothing but activate Chrome and open up Sling if I wanna watch TV. Why would I do that? Why would I make such a simple routine? Well, Keyboard Maestro's macros can be triggered by almost anything you can think of, from simple keystrokes to MIDI notes to other things, and one of my favorite ways to trigger them is to trigger macros by name. Here, every time I hit Control Space, I bring up the trigger macro by name function. It looks a lot like Spotlight, and all I have to do here is type what I want, hit Return, and it'll do it for me. Next up is ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow is pretty much the ultimate screen capture and linear video editing tool I've ever used. It lives in my Mac's menu bar, and anytime I need it, I can simply go there and tell it to start recording my screen. It can record multiple screens, it can record iPhones and iPads, it can even capture multi-track audio from the system. In fact, it's capturing my voice and my screen right now. Then, once you get inside the editor, it's extremely easy to annotate, zoom, edit, and do any kind of touch-ups to your video. Then with a couple clicks more, you can publish them straight to YouTube or any other video destination. Sometimes I use it not only for professional tutorial videos, but even if I just need to show a friend how to do something, I'll just hit that record button, demonstrate it, narrate it, upload it to YouTube, and call it done. Handbrake is the Swiss Army knife of video transcoding and compression, and it's entirely free. You can get it from handbrake.fr. When you first launch Handbrake, it'll ask you what video file you want it to load. Then, simply use the preset menu to choose the preset you need. If it's headed for the web, you might use the Vimeo YouTube high quality option at 1080p. This preset can shrink files by more than a half their file size without any discernible quality difference. There are also device presets if you're going to Android or Apple TV or Chromecast or any other popular destinations. On occasion, if a client sends me a very large 4K video file and I'm going to score music to it, I don't really want my computer using so much power to display that 4K movie in a tiny thumbnail on my screen 
while I write music around it. So I'll run the video through Handbrake and use a general, fast preset and maybe shrink it down to 720p. My new working version is so much smaller and easier for my computer to play, and now I can use its power for the things I really need it to do, like playing back virtual instruments. These apps just scratch the surface of what I consider absolutely indispensable tools for my workflow. So let me know in the comments below what your must-have Mac apps are, and give a like and subscribe for future videos where I'll show you some of my other favorite tools.